In the recent chapter of Boruto, we see that Code has finally decided to invade the village using his Tentel's army. This is his way of luring Boruto out of hiding since he figured he would defend the village and his friends even though he's the most wanted man on the planet. Now the plan itself does make sense to some degree until it doesn't. It appears that Code miscalculated. He doesn't just now need to handle Boruto alone since the village is packed with overpowered characters such as Ada, Damon, and Kawaki. However, this isn't news to Code. He knew this before entering the village, so what exactly is his plan? You see, I believe that Code's real plan isn't to kill Boruto. This is all smoke and mirrors. Code's true goal is Ada. To understand what I mean by this, we have to go back to his conversation with Sarda, where it's revealed to us that Code is missing an eye. What this implies is that Code has been in battle since we last saw him prior to the time skip. However, who could have done this to Code? He's one of the cyborgs stated to have greatly surpassed Jigen, the same Jigen who absolutely bodied pre-nerf Naruto and Sasuke. It just doesn't make sense, unless this person was Boruto himself. You see, I made a video a few weeks ago explaining why I believe that Boruto has already awakened the Drogon and Code knows about it and its abilities. That's why Code told Sarada to scream so that Boruto could hear her and come to the village. He knows that this will work since one of the Drogon's abilities allows Boruto to see where someone is calling out to him as seen in the anime. In addition to this, after Sarda informed Ko that Boruto left the village over three years ago, he replied saying that he's already aware of that. In fact, Ko went on to say that he has been chasing Boruto for the past two years, which implies that he was able to meet Boruto within the first year of him leaving the village but hasn't been able to find him since. So now Ko's plan is to use Boruto's village and his friends as leverage to draw Boruto out of hiding. However, as I mentioned before, Ko isn't that stupid. He's fully aware of the fact that the village is guarded by Kawaki, Ada, and Damon. Even Amado himself, who knows the full capabilities of an unlimited code, said that with Ada and Damon added to Kona's arsenal, code should be insignificant. And even if you want to ignore statements, it's literally shown that Damon alone is leagues above code in speed and strength, not to mention his overpowered reflection ability. Then there's Ada, who code is still charmed by since he hasn't been able to feed Boruto or Kawaki to the Tentel in order to evolve into a true Otsutsuki. Now he's bringing Boruto to that same village to have a brawl in the open and expect no one will interfere. Well, as I said before, Code isn't stupid. He knows all of this. He knows everything I just said. Yet he still decided to come to the village, so obviously Code has a plan. I believe that Code is really after Ada, more specifically Ada's Senrengan. You see, if you think about it, this plan makes perfect sense. He hasn't been able to locate Boruto for over two years. He lost one of his eyes in battle and now he's desperate. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. In this case, Code plans on taking Ada's Senrengan so they can use its clairvoyance to find out where Boruto has been hiding this entire time. In fact, it would allow him to always know where Boruto is at any given time. The plan almost makes too much sense. Now, I'm sure you guys are probably thinking that Code has two big obstacles he needs over overcome first. One being the fact that he can't physically hurt Ada and the other being Damon himself. But what if I told you that Code already has a plan for both? This is where the focus shifts mainly to Code's Tentel's army referred to as the Claw Grimes. You see, these guys exist for one reason and one reason only. That being their ability to ignore Ada's commands or to not be affected by her charm ability. This makes perfect sense since Code's Claw Grimes are not sentient beings that feel complex emotions. Or at the very least they don't seem to be. By the way, this wasn't the first time we've seen such creatures in the Naruto universe. If you go back to the war arc back in Shippuden, the Tentels itself was able to create these beings all by itself. What's interesting here is that upon seeing this, the first Okage immediately identified them as fission beings, which makes it seem as if he has encountered something similar before. The important takeaway is that these beings were just mindless entities operating purely on instinct, which was to protect the main body. The only difference between these fission beings and Code's claw grimes is the fact that they are also infused with Code's claw marks. This is very significant since Code's claw marks consist of the iron from his blood and his own powerful chakra, the same chakra that's likely responsible for his incredible power. So these claw grimes should be significantly more powerful than the Tentel's fission beans from the war. With that being said, Code's 
because chakra and iron doesn't provide them sentience so they are pretty much the same in that regard. One thing to note is that all sentient beings are conscious beings, though a conscious being may not be sentient. So in essence, sentience is the ability to experience feelings and sensations, while consciousness is described as the act of being aware and responsive. So even if you want to argue that these beings are conscious, there is no indication that they are indeed sentient. This simply means that Ko can use these creatures to capture Ada and take her Senrengan for himself. This plan however requires him or his Clawgrams to get close to Ada, which he will be able to accomplish by using his fight versus Boruto and Kawaki as a cover for what's actually happening. So the real plan is to lure everyone to the battlefield including Kawaki and Damon, then he's going to leave them mid-battle using his claw marks and then head over to Ada's location which he's already located using the claw marks he placed on the shinobi within the village. Now there's also a possibility that Damon might not fall for this trick and just choose to stay by Ada's side instead. In which case, Cold would try to overpower or distract Damon using the sheer numbers of his claw marks he's able to summon to the battlefield. We have to remember that Cold was said to have created well over 1000 claw grimes pre time skip. Just imagine the size of his army 3 years later. With that being said, it's also possible that Damon can't reflect the attacks of that many attackers at the same time. But even if we disagree that headcanon, Cold really only needs Damon to be distracted for a short while, just one second, which would allow him to quickly grab Ada through one of his portals. Now, as I mentioned in my prior video on Boruto taking Ada's Senringan and reversing omnipotence, Dojutsu transferal should work perfectly with transferring Ada's abilities to someone else. The only issue here is whether you believe Ada's abilities are actually stored within the eyeball itself. I was able to somewhat confirm that both omnipotence and the clairvoyance ability does function through Ada's eyeball. This was confirmed to be the case in chapter 79 itself when Kawaki began to explain what he truly desired to Ada. She still had her Senrengan pupil on full display but when Kawaki later said, you've got this all seen Senrengan, use it to look at me, see me for the powerless piece of garbage that I am. That's when the next panel shows a more determined looking Ada with her Senrengan pupil now missing. Of course you guys know what happens next. Ada then flew up into the air with Kawaki then let out a burst of chakra in the form of her Senrengan pupil. Not only that, immediately after casting the jutsu, her Senrengan pupil returned. What this simply implies is that Omnipotence is definitely a dojutsu based ability and should transfer over to Boruto or Code in the event that the eye itself is transplanted. Now, as I said before, there is precedent for this in the world of Naruto. Infinite Tsukinomi, for example, is a powerful genjutsu technique that manipulates the victim's perception of reality. In essence, it's like being trapped in a never ending dream. In order to achieve this, Obito needed to be able to summon the Tentel's husk from the moon, which can only be done using the Renegon. The issue here is that Obito never awakened the Renegon himself, so he had to use Madara's Renegons instead. So after implanting Madara's eyes, he gained access to the Ghetto Statue among many other abilities innate to that Dojutsu. This is also very similar to how Kakashi got access to Obito's calming ability, among the other benefits of the Sharingan after receiving Obito's left eye. So this just supports the idea of Boruto or Code being able to use the ability of the Senrengan if they steal it. Now just to clarify, I'm not saying that Code will be able to use omnipotence since he isn't Otsutsuki. In his case, I'm also referring to the clairvoyance ability. Now don't get it twisted, Code's goal is still to get rid of Boruto but he needs to have a way to do this without him getting packed up by the entire village. And while I do believe that Code in his unlimited form while using his karma seal because everyone is using this off guard feat by Boruto stepping on Code and then dodging a swipe attack from a Code who isn't even using his karma seal which is the entire basis for his power. Speaking of that, I want you guys to pause the video right now then scroll down to the comment section and let me know do you think Code greatly surpasses the power of Jigen without using his karma seal or do you think Code's power is derived from the power of Ishiki's karma seal and not due to him being a cyborg? Because the argument that everyone has been using to say that base Boruto has greatly surpassed Jigen levels of power is because base Boruto was able to step on Code and also dodge the direct attack. But as I pointed out earlier, this analysis ignores the fact that Code is currently using his base form. He hasn't activated the karma seal. So let me know in the comments, do you think Code is greatly above Jigen in base or do you think he needs to have the karma seal active? 
objective to achieve this level of power. This will of course get us to scale Boruto properly since his scaling depends on where we scale base code. With that being said, characters do get stronger over time, especially with a 3 year time skip. So Kawaki is probably way stronger than he was before and so is Boruto and also code as well. So this fight might not be the code wash everyone is predicting is going to happen. However, even if you think code is above Kawaki and Boruto, I still believe that his true plan isn't to fight both of them because he knows that Ada and Damon could show up at any point in time because they're also tasked with protecting the village as well. So if it does go bad versus Kawaki and Boruto, Damon and Ada would have to show up to defend the village. And that's how we get back to my initial statement that code is actually planning on getting Ada instead and this is all just a distraction. But with that being said again, let me know your thoughts on the theory. Do you think it's plausible? Do you think it makes sense? Or do you think this is just code cope? <laughs> you know, do you think I'm coping here? I'm a massive code fan, which I'm certainly not if you have watched my prior videos on code. So just let me know what you think about my thoughts and I'll give you my thoughts as well in the comments section and also join the discord if you want to have a discussion off YouTube. You know, the link will be in the description. Alright, so that's it for this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.